Welcome to the vlog everybody. I've made it down island to Comox and I've received a tip about something that'll be very cool to film. And what will I be filming tonight? Well, I'm parked right underneath one of the Yes, this is one of the Snowbirds legendary aircraft with their famous red, blue, and white Canadian Armed Forces specialty design. It's very iconic uh, here in Canada. They are, of course, the the, the, the demonstration group uh, that does air shows all across the country. Now they're going out on their annual tour in June doing their air acrobatics and stunts. They have the uh, Snowbirds aircraft here in recognition of the contribution made by the men, women, and families of the CFB Comox to the Comox Valley over at the 19 wing, which we are going to arrive at fairly soon. So out on the road here on tour, I have to find uh, places to stay. And so I checked into a campsite today and he warned me. He said, you know, when you're staying here, just be aware there will be a little bit of noise. I'm really sorry, but uh, the snowbirds are practicing at the uh, military air base next door. And I'm like, really? No way. So I get a free show. I get to vlog it for you people. And yeah, if you're anywhere near uh, the Comox Air Force Base, and I mean anywhere near, because obviously... They cover a, a fair bit of ground here. If you're anywhere near Comox, yeah, they're practicing most days here in town, doing their tricks. Uh, but first of all, I'm gonna head into town here, over to the Air Force Base itself and a museum that I'm told is open today. Uh, I've never been in there, I don't know what to expect, uh, but I'll show you guys. All right, I have now made it here to what they refer to as 19 Wing. This is the Comox Air Force Base, and they've got a lot of historic aircraft here near the Comox Air Force Museum. They've got this, uh, forgive me if I have the term wrong, fuselage. This Hawk 1 aircraft outside. I'll have to check that out. Wow, this was the signature aircraft. I'm right underneath it now. The signature aircraft of the Nighthawks, 409 all-weather fighter squadron. And uh, it says that it was in service from 1971 through 1984 and it's been here at this pedestal ever since 1992 for the 67th anniversary already of the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's absolutely amazing here. So she told me, the lady at the front desk told me that this Air Force Base has been here since the Second World War, since 1942. And this building that is hosting the museum now is one of the original 1942 buildings. So that's very cool. And uh, the museum starts with some artifacts from the First War. Well, this is absolutely amazing. Nurse Violet's book. She would have the soldier's writer draw something in her book in, 20, in, in 1916 before she would let them out of the hospital. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. Why are the Canadians like a hard-boiled egg? Because you can cut through, but you can't beat them. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And then it moves on into the Second War when this particular Air Force Base began being used. Here's some looks at it from back in the day. Wow. The first runway being built here in Comox in 1942. Wow. Holy, wow. Bomb arming switches. Yikes. They have the entire engine out of a training aircraft called the Fairchild. Cornell Mark II. Oh, it's got the uh, Ranger Aviation Engine informational plate on it, too. This particular one is dated 22743. Wow. The Japanese, I didn't even know about this, uh, launched approximately 9,000 balloon bombs and less than 1,000 made it to North America. This is an actual fragment of one of the balloons. Wow, that's scary. That's what it would have looked like in the air. Jeez. This 
Museum also pays tribute to the women's division of the RCAF, including this uh, section dedicated to Ruth Masters with her uniform and her medals here. It says that she passed away only a few short years ago in 2017. Wow. Oh, and that's her. Wow. Well, this is freaky. This is an Air 2 Genie, a Cold War era, air-to-air -air missile. Uh, well, it's, it was never an actual missile. It's an inert weapon. Probably good that it's just an inert rocket here in the museum. Another one up here that is a little bit smaller. An AIM-2 Falcon. The U.S. Air Force, their first operational air-to-air -air missile. Wow, first developed in 1946. Wow. So very, very early Cold War. Wow, as a hockey guy, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to see this jersey from the RCAF Flyers, the uh, Air Force team that won Olympic gold for men's hockey back in 1948. Wow. 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 Now this dwarfs the last engine I saw. In the summer of 1946, the RCAF placed an order with Avro Canada for an all-weather fighter. When Avro decided to build its engines themselves, the Orenda turbojet started, and the first one flew in 1951, and this is an engine from it. From Orenda Engines Limited, Canada. Let's see, does it have a date on here? Can't tell. Very cool. Enormous, and I can only imagine how expensive this would have been. Well, they have a uh, variety of practice bombs here of varying shapes and sizes. I keep talking about the size of these engines and then I just keep turning the next corner. Whoa, this is an Argus engine, 3,700 horsepower. Here's one of the propeller blades. Wow. Wild. Also, I haven't even been talking about the amount of extraordinarily detailed scale models of aircraft that are in here. There's so many of them in this museum. Wow, and I almost missed this amazing section with this scale model, wow, of this Air Force Base uh, between 1955 and 1960. And this is a uh, control panel that would have been in the tower. Wow. Very cool. That is wild to get to see like their approximate view, what it would have looked like. So yeah, a lot of amazing stuff in there. I've really only scratched the surface of the cool stuff in there. But now I'm gonna head across the way here where they have some original and amazing aircraft you can check out. And now here we are at what is known as the Heritage Air Park with some absolutely amazing planes with the old Air Force, Canadian Armed Forces paint job. This is a Voodoo aircraft from 1961 and they flew till about 1990 it looks like. It looks like they're currently working on this absolutely enormous rescue aircraft just huge really I don't think uh, my camera will do justice to the sheer size of these things one of the aircraft referred to as the Canuck these began flying in 1951 so even older it's amazing to be up close to these These T-33s were in service over 50 years. 
So it would have started flying approximately 1952. And you can see it's in the more modern Canadian uh, Army, or Air Force, excuse me, colors. Because, yeah, I guess it would have flown until 2005. So that is a long service life. And there's a lot more of the larger scale aircraft over here. Like this Douglas DC-3 Dakota, first flown in 1933. It describes it as arguably one of the most successful aircraft ever built. This particular one looks like it was in service from 1943 all the way to 1989. Retired from flying March 18th. Now this is the one that uh, caught my eye from the street. Such an iconic Air Force paint job with the zigzagging lines. This is the Argus Mark I. Again, I know I'm saying this about all of these, but it is friggin' enormous. And it is, uh, yeah, this one was in service 1957 to 1988. So it's funny, even though it was in service over 30 years, still, it's, it seems like that's almost one of the shorter service lives for some of the planes we've seen here. Ooh, wow. The Sikorsky Sea King. Wow, see, speaking of aircraft with incredibly long service lives, this one in service 1961 to 2019. So this one's just recently retired after, what? what's that, 58 years with the, uh, the armed forces? Wow. They also have a Boeing Vertol CH-113 Labrador, AKA the Sea Knight. There's a great shot of one of them in action. It was used for over 40 years. Uh, it says retired in 2004, um, but yeah, began its service life all the way back in 1963. And this has a very cool plaque on it, uh, signifying its service life. CH-113 Labrador, 1963 to 2004, mission accomplished. And now here we have a genuine fighter jet. This is a Canadair CF-104 Starfighter. This says it served as a frontline fighter with NATO in Europe. And it says it was originally a defense aircraft capable of nuclear strike until 1970. Wow. Served from 1961 through 1988. And here is a monument to the 407 Maritime Patrol Squadron. This Argus propeller, so a propeller from one of those airplanes behind me, stands as a testimony to the dedication of both the air crew and ground crew who guided her through this proud chapter of our history. And here's another monument, the badge of honor, the Red Beret. And here are some individuals who passed away. So those are all the aircraft that you can see uh, as of now, I think there was one helicopter that was out uh, for like renovations or something. Um, but it's we're getting close to that time when the uh, snowbirds are gonna start uh, doing their exercises. And it's something I would absolutely love to vlog. So I'm gonna head over to my campsite, uh, which I've been told is a very good viewing spot for their maneuvers. Yeah, I don't exactly know what to expect, but uh, come follow me and we'll check it out. It is kind of an overcast day. We'll see if we uh, see them out today. Here's the Salish Orca making her journey from uh, Powell River over into Comox here. That's cool. We'll see if we see some snowbirds. Oh, I think I might hear something.
see them, <laughs> but I hear them. There's one. Oh, they're all in line. They come. again.
seem to be all going one by one and doing this same move that I would probably be able to see a little better if I were somewhere else, but very cool nonetheless. they'll be wrapping up soon here. It is starting to rain. Oh, they're starting something. And now they appear to have uh, turned in for the day. It is, of course, getting quite rainy. I keep thinking I hear them and then remembering that there's a road behind me and I'm just hearing cars going by. That was nuts. I don't know if the video did justice uh, how close by they flew a couple times and how just loud they are. Yeah, if you're in the uh, Comox area, well, if you're in the Comox area, you know about this already. I had a few people just walking around like nothing's happening, so. But yeah, I keep thinking I hear them. There's just a helicopter going by right now. But yeah, I'm at Kin Beach Provincial Park, which is a great place to see the snowbirds. Um, I'm sure that from almost anywhere near the water in this valley, you'll be able to see them. They cover a lot of ground doing this, but uh, the Kin Beach campsite right by the airport there, the Air Force Base rather, seems to be a great place to watch them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of them doing their uh, training exercises. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a musician myself, and you can check out the description for links to where you can find my music, where it's sold or streamed online. Uh, like this video if you liked what you saw, subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying my videos. Can't promise I'll have more Snowbirds content for you. This was just kind of a one-off thing, but I had a lot of fun watching them. And yeah, uh, you can ring the notification bell too if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video, which will be very soon. I'm out on tour. I got four dates left on Vancouver Island before I head home and going to make a fun last week of it. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll catch you all again real soon.